In the first two parts of the story of Black Tusk, we discovered their origins, their knowledge of green poison, their invasion of DC, and their plan to get the broad spectrum antivirals, perfusion bioreactor, and a virologist known to operate it. Their involvement in the penultimate battle with Aaron Keener on Liberty Island at the end of Warlords of New York set off events that kickstarted season 1 through 4. In this episode, the third part of the story of Black Tusk, we will go over season 3 and its developments and answer the following questions. Who is Natalia Sokolova? To what extent are Barden Shaver and Fela collaborating? And are the hunters working with Black Tusk? That and much more will be answered in this faction brief. Before continuing the video, as an added way to increase my income on YouTube, I have joined affiliate programs of companies and products that I support. The affiliate links can be found in the description. You can support me by using the supporter creator code MastermindsHD in the Epic Games Store and by clicking on or buying games and other products through the Kingwin and Amazon links. On top of that, I link to each of the products I use in my setup as a content creator, so if you're considering using these products, you can support me by following the link. I will only recommend products and services I use myself. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. Lau, acting commander for the division in New York City, was the most loyal supporter of the division. The division's failures made her disavow the division and turn to Black Tusk. Although for many her decision came out of the blue, Lau's decision was all but spontaneous. It had been months in the making. The interrogation of Coswald had Lau thinking, and although she was initially resilient, Coswald managed to convince Lau to join Black Tusk. Lau was Black Tusk's inside man with the division and was later revealed to have been the reason how Black Tusk managed to locate Keener, although it's still unknown what their reason is for going after him. I heard you had some civvies recover the supply drop. They suspect anything? I don't think so. No one here has a clue I'm working with you. You're a patriot. Everything about you except your stubborn nostalgia screens, I'm with Black Tusk. Guess it's a good thing I'm with Black Tusk now. At least you're on the right side now. Tell me you got something, Lau. We're getting closer. Keener's been setting up a stronghold. Any idea where? Gun to my head? I'd say Liberty Island. Keener is the kind of douchebag who would choose to set up his base at a national landmark. Guess he hasn't forgotten all his division training. He didn't learn that from the division. Sure thing. I'll send a recon team. Negative. Don't want to blow my cover until I'm sure we've got what we need. Whatever you say, double agent Lau. Keener is on Liberty Island. We've confirmed it. Tell them to meet me on the island. Negative. Wait for backup. We are only going to get one shot at this. You're right. That's why you should wait for backup. He knows we were close. If we don't move now, we will lose If him. you go without backup, we might lose you. That's not a risk I'm willing to take. It's not your decision, Faye. There's plenty of boats. I'll go ahead and make sure he doesn't leave, and my backup can take the next one. Kelso, out. Shit. Schaefer, ETA on that hovercraft. Approaching the ferry terminal. That's perfect. <sighs> hey, Roy. Kelso's trying to commandeer a boat. Where's that backup? It wasn't long after the division discovered Keener's location. After an intense battle, the Division managed to finish their manhunt and however stupid it was, managed to defeat Aaron Keener, the greatest adversary to both the Division and Black Tusk. However, as can be expected from Keener, he had something up his sleeve and it was called Keener's Legacy. As the Division was focused on finding out what Keener's Legacy was and in eventually defeating Jupiter and Hornet, Black Tusk had time to regroup. Leading up to Warlords of New York and the penultimate battle on Liberty Island, Black Tusk, against all odds, had lost a large part of their resources and manpower to the Division and Keener. The Division's failings and Keener's legacy provided Black Tusk with a solution to one of their problems, manpower. After the battle of Liberty Island, Lau and Shaver met in person. From this point on, Lau would be tested and would create her own squad. How's it feel? Comfortable. Lacks personality, though. Easier to spot a friendly in the field. The uniform doesn't guarantee you're a friendly. Fair enough. I like your style, Lau. No bullshit. I think you'll fit in well here. Me too. Do I get to build my team? Are you testing me out with an established squad? Are you worried about getting hazed? I've had to break into boys' clubs before. I know how you like to test people. 
finish this up and we'll talk about building your own squad. Copy that. Since discovering he turned Lau and Coswell, the division suspected Barton Shaver had been recruiting other disavowed agents. It appeared to be true, but wasn't always successful. So it's true. Back from the dead. What do you go by nowadays, Carter LaRue or Hornet? Who is this? Just a guy trying to build a friendship. I don't have the patience for riddles. And I sure as shit don't need any more friends. After what happened to Keener, I think you do. You're a black tusk. Barton Schaefer. Perceptive. <sighs> Sounds to me like you're the one who needs some friends. I know all about your recent recruiting drive. Let me save you the trouble. I'm not interested. You don't want to hear the pitch? You lost DC. Screwed up in New York. Couldn't even hold Trinenko for more than two goddamn seconds before the division swooped in. You're desperate. So save your breath. You want to lecture me about failure? I could shoot myself in the dick and I still wouldn't be as big a fuck up as you, Black Tusk Special Unit Leader Barton Schaefer. Mistakes were made, but if you want to come out of this alive, there's only so far a group of terrorists can get you. I died once already. Or did you forget about that? Now Keener's not around to bring you back this time. Oh, he's around. In more ways than you'll ever realize. Carter, Hornet, LaRue, other than Lau and Coswald, was the first rogue agent Shaver attempted to recruit to Black Tusk, or so it seemed. Hornet, however, was loyal to Keener even after his demise. This left Shaver with empty hands, but it wouldn't take him long to find fresh blood. Shaver's task force would initially manage to contract four agents. Marley Shade Yarrow, Sueco Wraith Tanagi, Lynette Dusk Edwards and Skylar Belfry Williams. Agent, you know the drill. We've got another cell for you to take down. Only this time, you'll be after a familiar high-value target. Barden Schaefer, leader of the BTSU. Since we discovered he turned Lau and Coswold, we've suspected he's been recruiting other disavowed agents to his unit. Call sign Shade. Marley Yarrow was activated during the second wave in New York. Worked for a PMC before she was activated. We're pretty sure she's embedded with the Rikers. Sueko Tanagi, call sign Wraith. We've got reports that she's been coordinating supply drops with the hyenas. We have no idea how long this trader's been working with them and the Black Tusk. Lynette Edwards, call sign Dusk. She thinks she's a true patriot and reportedly joined the True Sons. Schaefer's really picking the smart and stable ones. And his latest recruit, Skylar Williams, call sign Belfry. Don't know if he's clever or crazy, but he's been spotted with the outcasts. So my bet's on crazy. Schaefer's highly mobile and tends to keep his movements need to know, making him that much more difficult to track. But taking out his rogues will force him out of the shadows. Once you've dealt with Schaefer, Black Tusk will be without their top dog. We'll have a helo for you on standby. Marley Shade Yarrow was a parole officer for the greater metropolitan area before she was activated. Many of her parolees were incarcerated at Rikers Island and saw how they had been mistreated and was recruited by James Dragov to help support the Rikers. Prior to going rogue she worked closely with Fei Lau, who recruited her to Black Tusk after Dragov's death. You'll get the delivery tomorrow. Thanks, Schaefer. You'll get that destabilization you're looking for. That's not the goal, Shade. We'll keep the division busy, so you can do whatever high-level espionage it is you need to do. Well, if you're so smart, why the hell are you running with the Rikers? You want to be on the winning side, right? I want to be on the right side. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. Delivery tomorrow. Get a recovery team together. We get coordinates, or just hoping for some shit to fall out of the sky. We'll get them an hour before the drop. Safer that way. Shit, I was joking. I heard you talking to Schaefer. You forget that name. Okay. Stop playing. You know what happens to people who play with me. Went to the meet, but you weren't there. What happened? Sorry, I had to handle something in DC. You're the one who wanted to meet, and you stand me up. I didn't mean to disrespect you. I should have called. But these comms aren't the most secure, and I didn't want to give away your location. That's okay, Schaefer. This time, you come to me. It's too much of a pain in the ass for me to get off the island. Name the time and place. I'll be there. Once you land in two bridges, ping me and I'll send coordinates. After working as a logistics officer in the United States Army, Sueko Reithanagi moved back to Atlanta and started working as a logistics officer for an international shipping company. She was recruited by the division and was activated to help keep Sarah's supply lines open when the global economy started to shut down. 
She was simultaneously approached by Black Tusk and decided to exploit this golden opportunity to control supplies to two main competitors, the United States government and the global corporation that funds Black Tusk. Raid's profile raises more questions than answers. How did she manage to supply both Terra and Black Tusk without anyone noticing? To what extent did she have control over the supplies? And did she have information on the global corporation that funds Black Tusk? And precisely that is interesting, as we didn't know it was a global trade corporation. And one more question, how did Raid manage to work together with the hyenas? All these questions aren't answered, most likely due to lack of proper writing, but we have details on her collaboration with Schaefer. Get a crew together. Supply or combat? Supply. Got a new contact, needs to prove himself. Oh shit, we're getting helicopter drones? Uh, no, I didn't ask for anything that bad shit. Too bad. I could do some real damage with one of those. Yeah, pretty sure you just get high and blow up another safe house. Schaefer! Wraith, what can I do for you now? You can get that tone out of your voice. What can I do for you, Wraith? You got an ETA on my delivery. Should have everything ready for your deadline tomorrow. Good boy. You sure you don't need anything else? Mm, just the tear gas. When you said you were gonna test me, I expected a test. <laughs> You're still being tested. You haven't made the delivery yet. I value punctuality. I'm always on time. We'll see. Well done, Schaefer. You made the deadline. I'm a man of my word. For now. I need another delivery. You know you're not my only operator. I know, but I'm your best. And if you want to keep me happy, you'll find a way to get a delivery of tear gas to Judiciary Square. The sooner the better. Whatever you need, Wraith. I aim to please. That's my good boy. I knew you wouldn't let me down. I don't know if you're new to this whole comms thing, but you should really be using code. Or get us more secure channels. I've got to work with the tools at my disposal, Wraith. Seems a bit reckless. Makes me worry about you, Schaefer. Sweet of you to worry. You're sloppy. Either you're trying to get yourself, or me, killed. And if you're trying to get me killed, I hate to disappoint you, but better men have tried and failed. Wraith, I'm not suicidal, and I know that your position with the hyenas allows us to operate more freely in DC. I see your value. I am not sloppy. But resources are limited, and we all have to make do with what we have. Well done. You didn't yell at me. You had a reasonable answer for your way of working and complimented me. Well then, you passed the test. Lynette Dusk Edwards is a third generation Marine. She was recruited by the division based on a recommendation from her father while serving her first tour of duty. She is a career military. When she was activated in Washington DC, she realized that the institution had been corrupted and she found herself aligning more with True Sons philosophy than the SHD. She went rogue, joined the True Sons and agreed to work with Shaver and Black Tusk. We need anything. Running low on rations, bullets, grenades and men. So just everything? Pretty much. How long can we hold out on the current stockpile? A week? Maybe more if we stop feeding the privates. I'll start eating rats before we stop feeding our men. That's how you get a mutiny. Schaefer, need an emergency supply drop. What kind? Weapons or rations? Yes. Airdrop or do you need a delivery? Whatever gets my men fed and armed by tomorrow. You got enough ammo to take on hostiles? One or two squads. Then it gets dicey. I can arrange an airdrop and send coordinates. Have your team there in two hours. Thanks, Schaefer. No problem, Dusk. Schaefer? How can I help you, Dusk? Want to let you know we got the supply drop. Glad to hear it. My boys are fed and armed and ready to fight. Glad to hear it. What do you need? Wanted to set up a meet. What for? I like to know who I'm working with. I always find a face-to-face -face tells you so much more than a voice on the radio. Fair enough. Whenever you're free, come meet me in Southwest. I've got a safe house there. Looking forward to meeting you. Sounds good. Looking forward to meeting you too, Dusk. Faye, this is Schaefer. I'm worried this op is getting a little expensive. Are we sure we want to spend all these resources on the hyenas and the true sons? Dusk wants to meet up in person now. Either she's got a crush on me, or this is a trap. How well do you really know these people we're working with? 
Schaefer arranged supply drops for Shade, Wraith and Dusk, who respectively joined up with the Rikers, Hyenas and True Sons. This collaboration would cost Black Tusk resources and although it should allow Black Tusk to operate more freely with the support of these factions, Schaefer didn't trust the situation. However, one of the four agents had a little more trouble getting supply drops. Skylar Belfry Williams was born and raised in Maryland. After serving in the United States Army and being recruited by the division, Belfry retired from the military and became a local police officer for a bedroom community before being activated. Once activated, he was stationed in Washington DC at the Sarah camp in the Southern Dark Zone. After his experience in the camps, where he watched families perish from exposure to DC-62, he went rogue and eventually joined Black Tusk and started working with the outcasts. What is it, Belfry? You working with Schaefer? Yeah, you know I am. What do you think of him? Ooh, very professional. You've been getting your deliveries? Yeah, on time and in full. Fuck. You're not? No. Ooh, guess he likes me better than you. Dusk. What is it, Belfry? What do you think of Schaefer? You like working with him? He's my bitch. What's not to like? You getting your deliveries? Yeah. He saved my ass last week with a ration supply drop. Fuck. He blowing you off? He's not responding to my calls. Maybe he realized your crazy ass was a lost cause and cut his losses. <laughs> Thanks, Dusk. Hope he cuts you too. Schaefer, this is Belfry. Come in. What can I do for you? We're running low on munitions, incendiaries, and rations. We need a delivery yesterday. I can get an airdrop put together for you in two hours. Have something to take care of first. Just need a drop zone. West End. I have a recovery team based there. Perfect. I'll put it together. Hold tight. The supply drop will be there soon. Don't leave me hanging again. I wouldn't do that. You can trust me. As Schaefer supplied his agents, the division picked up the chatter on their comms. Schaefer was highly mobile, making it impossible to track him down. However, his agents and their supply drops were located easier and the division managed to track them down and eliminate them. An interesting development was that a hunter, under the name of Deceit, would appear during every fight with rogue agents. The hunter's motives were unknown and always managed to escape. Losing his operators once again, Schaefer was backed into a corner and wanted to set up a meeting with Lao on Coney Island. Faye, we gotta talk about this operation. I know the comms aren't secure, but we need a face-to-face. -face. We need some privacy though, somewhere remote and isolated. I'll find a place and send you the coordinates. The division tracked down the location of the meeting. Schaefer had taken full reinforcements into the Riker infested ballpark of Coney Island. Unknown to the division, Lau didn't meet with Schaefer and the division launched their operation. As the division entered the arcade and made their way through the park, disturbing sounds and panicked Rikers would appear over the comms. The Rikers were being hunted. Time and time again, Deceit appeared but would disappear before the division's eyes as he was simply taunting them. It was unknown why the hunter was here. Was he hunting Schaefer or was he there to hunt down the agents? The division seemed clueless until Schaefer was heard over the comms. You out there? Listen, enough games. Finish it. Got <sighs> a boy. Deceit responded with a screech, almost as if he wasn't human. To the division's surprise, this hunter was working with Black Tusk and turned on the agents. Unable to circumvent, the division had to face the hunter head on. The agents managed to eliminate the hunter, and Natalia Sokolova's voice was heard on comms. Is the hunter still in play? The line's not secure, ma'am. Who cares? Negative on the hunter, Miss Sokolova. I suppose it's up to you now, Schaefer, and our remaining BTSU operatives. But that shouldn't be a problem for you. We're ready, Natalia. Natalia Sokolova is the founder and co-CEO of Black Tusk, alongside an unnamed CEO that appeared in Echoes and Audio Recordings with Schaefer. Natalia, I'm not sure about this op. They wanted Black Tusk to collaborate with the government. This is Faye's chance to prove her agents are worthy, and our chance to keep my business partners happy. I think the only thing she's proving is the Division really needed a better screening process. You brought her in. Her failures are yours. Fix it. I do not tolerate failure. I understand. 
Her early life is shrouded in mystery. She was raised in Russia separate from her younger brother Felix Kestrel Sokolov who was sent to the United States by their father and the then CEO of Sokolov Concern Alexei Sokolov. After her father's death Sokolova inherited her father's fortune and used it to put her brother through his education and start Black Tusk. With her brother joining the division she kept in touch and put him in a safe house to ensure his safety. His ties to the division suggest she had behind the scenes knowledge of the United States government and the division pulling the strings from behind the curtain. It's assumed she owns Sokolov Concern, which could be the global organization that backs Black Tusk. However, in the first part of this Black Tusk series I mentioned that Black Tusk is backed by shadowy companies, suggesting there is more than one. To what extent Black Tusk collaborates with the Hunters is unknown. Although many questions regarding Sokolova, the Hunters and the global organizations backing Black Tusk, it's most likely something we will find out in the year 3 content. Returning to the operation on Coney Island, the division proceeded to the roller coaster where Schaefer was waiting with his unit. Trevor Odin, Fane Adams, Thomas Reigns and Yvonne Buckley. As the division kicked down the rubble, the showdown between the agents and the leader of the BTSU started. One by one the division managed to take out his lieutenants, after which the attention was directed at Schaefer. Being one of the division's toughest battles, it took a lot, not really but for the sake of the story let's say it did, and Schaefer was defeated. Although critically injured, Schaefer wasn't dead and would be extracted by Kelso. This leaves but one target as of this moment. Feilau. That's where I'm going to end the third part of the story of Black Tusk. This episode was slightly shorter because if I'm honest I have the same kind of fed up with the division. Where the first two parts covered an interesting story filled with audio recordings, echoes, footage and information from the companion novels. Part 3 and 4 only consist of audio recordings, voice lines from the missions and one echo, all from recycled content. So to spread out my work I decided to create separate videos for the third and fourth season. There are some interesting developments in this season, mostly regarding Natalia Sokolova and the Hunter, but it raised more questions than it answered. However, the story is not over as the fourth part will add to this story too. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos is very time consuming from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. If you like these videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video, other than views this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. Another way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. Other than badges and emojis, members will have early access to uploads of the large projects such as short films and large lore videos. And with that in mind, I want to say thanks to Monty Lambert for being the first tier 2 member and to Khalil Cheeks, Nervous Wrecked, Sparky22, Carsten Block, Sal Martinez and Jack Pony for being tier 1 members of the channel. Your support means a lot. And the last way, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can support me by using the affiliate links and creator codes mentioned in the description. I'm invested in creating this brand and making it work, so the more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube to turn it into a full-time job. In turn, this will result in more frequent uploads, higher quality content and an amazing community. But however you choose to support me, I will be creating and uploading content because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.